Hey y'all, welcome to Sweet Tea and Butterflies. Today, we are making some patriotic decor and it is part of the What Would You Make Challenge, or collab, sorry, for May. We have, um, our host is Rustic and Lace DIY and DIY Craftaholic. The guest host is the Schwowin's Nest. So all of their information will be in the description box. So once you get done with my video, please go watch the playlist and like, subscribe, comment, share any of the other um, great, wonderful creators videos. We have um, a, a whole list of um, very talented creators in this, um, <clears throat> sorry, in this collaboration. So, um, my first project is I'm a wood round, small wood round that I am decoupaging the cow and the pig graphic on. And I'm just showing you kind of how you can separate the, you know, the thing out. It, when you tear it, it helps it blend to your background, to what you put it on, um, a little bit better. Now, I kind of had a boo-boo with this particular, um, this particular one. I made a very newbie mistake <laughs> and I didn't realize it until right about this part. So what I did was I took and I had painted the wood around on both sides white and I'm making a double sided. And then I put Mod Podge on both sides, let it dry thoroughly. Then I took my napkin and used the iron on method. Well, I realized that um, I forgot to separate the layers of the napkin. So I, when I did this part, it bubbled up and wrinkled up quite a bit once it dried it kind of settled a little bit and then I was able yeah you know, I just went in with the iron again after it was completely dry and I was able to smooth it out pretty well but take note make sure that you separate your layers um, these graphics I got from designbundles.net and I just took and taped um, a white napkin to some printer paper make sure you secure if you do this make sure that you secure it very thoroughly on that paper and make sure that your tape is very securely down and that there's no sticky parts sticking up because it'll catch on your roller and jam up your printer ask me how i know this <laughs> i've done it um had to take my printer apart to to get all of the mess out of there I didn't do it with this one, but I've done it in the past and, you know, knew it. just one of those mistakes that happen occasionally. So I went in with some Waverly wax, antique wax, and um, went over all around it. Um, I'm not sure I'm happy with that, but once I went over it, I couldn't get it all the way off. So. I just had to roll with it. Not a big deal. It, you know, it's still kind of, it's still cute and it's kind of old farmhousey looking. Um, I don't know. I just, I wasn't, wasn't happy with it. I should have just left it be. But anyway, to each their own and, you know, live and learn. Sometimes the distressing is not the best idea. When um, I did both sides like that, this side came out a little bit better than the other side did with the, um, the wax, but I figured once I was in on the, the first side, I might as well be all in on the second side. I took and wrapped it with some zoot, zoot, ha <laughs> ha jute twine lord it's been it's been a week y'all okay the date 
Today is Sunday, I, and this is the day that the video comes out. And I did the majority of the, the crafting yesterday. And I yesterday morning, just I should have known it was not going to be a very cooperative day. When I got up, went to make my coffee, and I grabbed my co my coffee can, and it's one of those plastic ones with the little lid and, and or with the little handle on it. Well, it shot right out of my um, hand, and those lids don't stay on those plastic coffee cans worth a hoot. So, dumped half of my coffee on the floor. That's the kind of day I was having. So, it's not surprising that I forgot to take the, separate the layers on that one. And, you know, there was just a bunch of miscellaneous other stuff that happened yesterday that had me wondering if I should have just gone back to bed. But, I had this video to get out. So, I just stuck with it. Went with the flow. And, toward the end of the day, it got better. So, there you have it. So here I'm just taking and burning off some of those little flyaways that are on jute twine. That particular twine's not too bad. I think that's one of the ones from Walmart. I'm not sure. I've been using it for a while and I don't have the packaging, so I'm not sure. So I took um, a couple of tumbling tower blocks and used the antique wax on those. and. I'm going to use those to create a stand for um, my little round there. And I did not think I left all of this painting in there. Okay, I guess I did. Anyway, <laughs> I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. See, it was one of those days. Um, actually, I edited it edited this video today so I can't use the excuse of yesterday's fiasco. Either way, we've got um, possible storms coming in. One of the other creators uh, got hit pretty bad with the storm um, this morning and she's in Kentucky. Usually what hits her comes my way. It looks from the radar like it's going to be skirting to the north of me but you never know. So I just took and lined these up on, on the bottom here so that it would stand up. And there you have it. Cute little pig and cow. I like those. I thought those were just adorable. And then I took and um, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with it. And I thought, ah, I can add a couple of some little flowers up at the top. So that's what I did. I had some um, some of these little blue flowers left from previous, from the DIY video that I did Friday. That was our patriotic collab. So I just took and snipped a couple of the little buds off and glued them on. I did this on both sides. And normally I wouldn't have necessarily left some of this stuff in, but usually I'll, at, when I'm done doing what I'm doing, oftentimes I'll, sh you know, show the, at the camera. So when I get in a crafting zone, I get in a crafting zone and I don't pay attention to what I'm doing as far as where I'm at in the view of the camera or thinking about, oh, well, I don't need to record all of this. I get in that zone and I just go. Uh, so sometimes my editing takes longer than it should if I would just hit the stop button more frequently, you know, when it's stuff that you don't need to see everything. You don't need to see me paint everything. You don't, you know, from start to finish, especially with this video. So now we're on to DIY number two, and I did the same thing with this little cutting board. I tore out the napkin, separated it this time. I learned my lesson, um, and I did the same mod pot or the same 
decoupage method of the Mod Podge, let it dry, place the napkin, use the, the iron to reactivate the Mod Podge, so on and so forth. Um, I was trying to sand some of that stuff away and then I realized, oh, hey, let's try the water and see if I can tear, and that worked. Um, so I just went around and kind of cleaned it up a little bit around there. What I had done for painting this, I took some painter's tape around the edge so that I could keep that blue border. And then I painted the, I used the Waverly's Cashew um, in the center of this. So the paints that I used for this entire video were Cashew, White, um, Ocean, Waverly Ocean, Waverly Crimson, and um, the Antique Wax. So <clears throat> I used those same paints through the entire, um, all of the projects. So here I'm just putting a top coat on um, and this one went so much smoother. No wrinkles. Imagine that. It's amazing what happens when you do it right. <laughs> but that's part of being a crafter. You, you know, sometimes you make some goofy mistakes and some of those mistakes end up to be, you know, happy blessings or happy accidents as we like to call them. And sometimes they, they're just, you might as well hang it up, forget it, because that's it, you know? Who knows? So I had taken, I had two different truck graphics that I did um, on here. And somehow I think I switched these. Um, no, I, I don't know. Did I switch them around? I may have. Anyway, I did the antique wax on these two um, after I did the Mod Podge. I just did a really light brush over um, to kind of blend everything in. And then um, I took some of this red and white baker's twine and wrapped the handle with it. I didn't realize I was that far off screen. I thought I adjusted that. So sorry, y'all. Tack it a little bit in the back, snip it off, and then I made um, a little shoestring bow for the for both sides. And that one kept creeping up a little bit on me, so I kind of tucked it down and tacked it too. I don't know why it was flush on one side and creeping up on the other with gaps in it. It's okay, fixed it. And then you get to see me struggle with this with these bows. The baker's twine likes to curl up, so it just kind of, it, it curled up, so I had to try again and try not to twist it as much. But I did that for both sides. Okay, get on with it already. Ugh. Editing. I thought I, I thought I took some of this out and I didn't. I was this video when I first uploaded everything, I had over three hours worth of video and I've managed to knock it down to 41 minutes and eight seconds. Um, so yeah, I was trying to get it down to 30 minutes, but it didn't quite happen. I guess there were a few things I could have cut out. Few more things I could have cut out but it still wouldn't have made a huge difference in it it would have just taken seconds off of it but here you go with um, both sides of it evidently I missed that okay so we're having a giveaway when we reach a thousand subscribers all of these craft supplies were given to me and I'm sharing the wealth so if you are a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. We, you know, we truly, truly appreciate your support. If you're watching from the playlist or if you're, if you're, you've happened upon our video in the YouTube verse, <laughs> um, please subscribe, 
uh, comment, like, share, all that good stuff. It helps in the algorithm. And once I get reach a thousand subscribers, I'm doing a giveaway with some of those craft supplies. I'm doing at least one giveaway. I'll probably do more than one. We'll see. Um, and it's just, it'll be random craft supplies from, from that stash that I was gifted. So, and, and that shed, that's not mine. That is, that, that's where all of them, all of those craft supplies were. My shed is full from top to bottom, front to back, and I'm trying to figure out where to put all of those craft supplies. But who's going to turn down free craft supplies, right? Are you, are you feeling it? <laughs> you feel me there? So anyway, I took and, um, some little different sized pieces of wood. Those came out of, out of that, um, craft supply giveaway thing that I was given. They were already cut blessings. I didn't have to mess with, uh, trying to cut them. So I took, painted them red, white, and blue, as you can see, and I'm using some of these um, rub-on transfers. I've watched other crafters use these, and um, they've, you know, they've said that they're difficult to use and difficult, you know, to to rub on. I didn't have any issues with this one or the star that I put on the, the little blue um, firework. But I used some uh, firework ones off of that same one later in the video that I had a little bit of issue with. So I guess it just depends on the how intricate the design is. And what you're putting it on, evidently. So here I'm cutting out that little star. I don't know why I showed you, I don't know why I left this in here of me cutting. Y'all know how to cut stuff out. Yep. No, nope. don't know where I was, what I was thinking, where I was going when I left it in there. And you know, that's, getting older sucks, you know? Because I literally just edited the video and then went back to, to do the voiceover all in one swoop. So it's not that long ago that I edited and left that in there. But I can't tell you why I left it in there. I may have just missed it, didn't think about it, who knows. Alright, so I took all three of those and my camera stopped. I didn't realize it. I just put ran a small bead of glue to tack them together um, so that I didn't have to fight with trying to tie them together. And I was going to try to put a bow on here and then I decided, no, I can't do those shoestring bows um, when it's tied on something because I go the wrong direction when I'm trying and then my tails are sticking up instead of down. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I seem to only be able to do it in one direction. And so I struggle. It's okay. It happens. So I took some of the baker's twine and put a dab of glue, hot glue, the, the little, um, oh, what do you call those? Ah, it was right there. It was literally right there until I went to say it. The fuses, that's it. The fuses on there. Today's a struggle. So I've got, um, I did all three of those. And then you see the little painted stars there. I cut out the painting of those. But with little stuff like that, um, if you put it, if you put a piece of tape upside down on you know your surface and stick them to your your tape makes it so much easier for painting you're not getting your fingers all messy and you're not chasing it all over the place so i put a white one on the blue 
firework and then I put two red ones on the white one. And see? Cute. All right, so when I was doing these, um, yes, these are not wood, but they go with the one uh, project, the, uh, the fireworks and these are part of um, the last project that I'm, I'm working into. So, <clears throat> and I thought, oh, well, these aren't wood, but the stars that I put on them are wood. So between the wooden stars and the fact that they go with the other project or the other, they're, they're pieces of a different project, I think it still qualifies. I, um, those are salt and pepper shaker lids from uh, leftover from the video I did Friday. And when I laid out everything I was going to make for each of the videos I was doing, um, those weren't even factored in there. But as I was doing something else, I glanced over at them and I just had this idea pop into my head. So I've got um, some floral wire. I had green and red. I couldn't find blue. So I had to paint these. These are the green ones. Um, I had to paint those with the ocean. Um, but I just took and made five of these and five of the red, twisting it around that little, um, it's a, what is it? It's for jewelry making. It's got a pointy, you know, to hollow out the beads or to, you know, when you've got beads that aren't quite the right size hole in them. I forget what it's called. So I took and I put just a dab of hot glue in some of the holes and just stuck these down in there. And I thought these turned out so cute. I was tempted to put some sparkly glitter stuff on them. Um, I might. I don't know. We'll see. I was trying to keep it more farmhousey and um, yeah, the glittery, sparkly stuff doesn't always go with farmhouse, so or rusticy looking stuff. So I did both of those, um, and then. On the middle one, the one that I put in the middle, I put the bigger red star on. And then, no, I was going after my tweezers because <laughs> it was easy. I realized it would be easier to get those where I needed them if I was holding it with the tweezers. So then I just kind of, um, I put the little two white ones and two red ones, the tiny stars, on this one and then on the red one I put um, the big blue star in the middle and then um, white ones and blue ones around it. And it's kind of tedious trying to get it on there but that's why I grabbed my tweezers so that my fingers and my fingernails weren't in my way as I was trying to put them on there. But see, so cute. And then I was, after I got all that stuck in there, I was trying to figure out, well, I got to cover up these holes and, and whatnot. And so I went and grabbed some of this floral moss um, and stuck it on there. Kind of lightly put it around in there to cover up the holes and, and the glue because you could, you could still see a little bit of the glue from where I stuck them in there. So this worked. I did that for both of them. This stuff is so messy. I have had the darndest time trying to find any Spanish moss and this was the closest I could find and I'm not thrilled with this particular moss but oh well. Um, so I went and flipped it over and just um, reinforced 
from the back side. And you'll see more of those on the final reveal. So on to DIY number four, which you, pro you probably saw earlier, the finished product of these. I should have swapped that around, but I didn't feel like messing with it at the time. Um, I just painted, one of them I painted the handles with the crimson, and the other one I painted the handles with the ocean blue. And I'm not gonna make you watch me paint the both of them. Um, I just went through and did this one. <clears throat> I thought I cut it where I'd only done one handle on this one. I guess not. That's probably because I got distracted by the dog when I was editing. I have a husky and she occasionally likes to awoo at me. That's her talking to me. Anybody who's ever had a husky or been around one understands that awoo because that's what it sounds like when they talk to you. It's a woo woo woo. Um, anyway, so I've got um, two of these that I, I printed out on a napkin and I remembered to separate these two. <laughs> I only messed up on the one. Learned my lesson the hard way. Because I knew, especially with this one, that it, was, it would be harder to smooth it out anyway. Um, because they're on the, the rolling pins. But separated that out and I had to cut it down. I'm not 100% happy with the way this one turned out. Um, the graphic is really, it's a really neat graphic. It's, um, it looks like, it's like a 3D graphic and, you know, the background is supposed to be like leather. It's supposed to look like a, a leather, um, some sort of leather artwork with the butterfly in there. But you can't see it as well um, on this. If I had sublimated it on something, it probably would have turned out exactly the way it needed to. But um, printing it on the napkin, it didn't quite, um, didn't quite pop the way I was hoping it would. It's so cute. It's just, it didn't come out like I'd hoped. So I just took and I realized I had gotten it just a little bit off center and it had sat too long. So I just had to roll with it because I couldn't get it off of there without tearing the napkin. So I just rolled with it and just lightly little by little so that I could get it around that without wrinkles. <clears throat> and the only reason I left all this in there is so that you could see the, you know, finished product too. So I don't know. But if, um, when you're decoupaging, you know, especially like with napkins and on a round surface, if you take it little by little, um, it come, you can get it on there pretty smooth. Now I know like if you're putting it on like a, a ball or something round like that, yeah, it's a little more difficult you pretty much have to cut and patchwork it on when you're doing something totally round. But something like this, you can just um, put it on there um, and just slowly go around it. Lord, I could have at least sped this up a little bit. A little bit more than I already did. It is sped up quite a bit because I was moving pretty slow with this, trying to make sure that I got it just right. And I ran a little bit more on the seam, 
to make sure that it um, secured. I let that layer dry and then I went back and went over it again. And I'm using the matte Mod Podge so that I don't have so much um, of that shiny that comes with the gloss. Um, I used gloss Mod Podge for the longest time and then I got my hands on some matte finish and I really like that much better than the, the glossy. You can see here I just kind of took that around and it sticks out, both of them stuck out over the ends and I just took um, one of those really thin nail files, the thin emery board type files and went around um, and just kind of sanded off the excess. So I'm going to take a moment here to, um, to invite you to follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, and we have our own um, little craft uh, group on our website too, where you can um, share your creations, um, brainstorm, you know, just whatever crafty things that you that you know you'd like to talk about or check out or share. Um, we invite you to join that as well. All right, so now on to DIY number five. This is the one that goes with the fireworks and all of that. So, um, I took the wooden crate, one of those wooden crates from Dollar Tree, and I did not make you watch me paint all of it, but I took around the, the top edge with the red, the middle with the white, and the bottom with the blue. As you can, you know, you see me paint just this uh, side right here. And it looks like I'm going really fast, but I was going really slow so that I didn't slop over the top or into the groove there. And I just did that all the way around, including the ends, um, as you can see now. And I took on the top and used the Waverly Antique Wax. And as Kathy Jo likes to put it, wax on, wax off, Mr. Miyagi style. Um, she cracks me up. I get such a kick out of Kathy Jo. She is so funny. In fact, yesterday when I dumped my coffee on the floor, I was like, I'm just going to go watch a couple of Kathy Jo videos because she'll have me laughing so I won't be quite as aggravated by the time I get to crafting. Thank you, Kathy Jo. You helped me out there. <laughs> so I did that and I also did these dowels um, with the antique wax. Um, did the wax on wax off method there too. And I just took and I wanted to make sure that I had it on straight so I kind of lined it up on there and especially this one I had to make sure that um, that I was lined up at the right spot at the bottom but I ran the glue and then just kind of rolled it over in the glue to keep it straight and it worked if I had just tried to place it on there after the, I, I, I for sure would have had it crooked not lined up right you know so I'm using another part of that um, rub-on stencil here that says fireworks. I'm putting it on the, the front. This one transferred really well too. It was the little fireworks ones that gave me trouble. Um, I didn't make you watch me struggle with the, the fireworks ones. Uh, I had to I had to rub quite a bit quite a while on those and I still ended up with some of the pieces missing 
but because they're like fireworks bursting, it um, it doesn't show very much. Um, it actually still came out okay, so that's good. <clears throat> but I just placed the fireworks ones on either side of it. I guess I will let you watch me at least put it on here so you could see where they were going. I'm trying to get an angle where the light doesn't um, to show you. And then I took those other stars that I had laying out there, laid those out on here and glued them down. And I guess I probably, now that I'm looking at it, I probably should have done a little bit of dry brushing on some of this to rustic it up a little bit more. But I was running out of time. By the time I was finishing this one, it was probably about 11.30 last night. I was crafting most of the day. I took a few breaks there. Like I said, I started out after the coffee dump <laughs> watching a few of Kathy Jo's videos because I was like, okay, I, I need I need something to get me out of this ready to throw something mood. Um, so... Thank you, Kathy Jo. And then I took some of this burlap with the stars on it. I thought I had got, I got um, several things of um, burlap stuff at Dollar Tree. I got this one, got a solid blue one and a solid white one, and then just regular burlap. But for some reason in my brain, I thought I had one that had red stars on it too. I didn't, so I just went with the flow and um, used the blue ones. I guess I probably could have taken some of the blue burlap and done a white star and a red star um, on it or done like the blue and the white. With Anyway, I did this. This is what I did, so we're sticking with it. It's funny how when you're watch, watching the video back and, and doing a voiceover, the, the idea comes into your head how you could have done like the red, white, and blue stars on there. I guess I could still probably paint the, uh, some of the stars, two of the stars, and place them over those blue ones if I wanted to. I don't know. I think I'll just leave it the way it is. I've got more crafting to do. Um, Tomorrow is my son and daughter-in-law's first wedding anniversary, so um, I'm going to take and I've got all of the flowers that we um, used for their uh, their wedding. The wedding venue already had big floral things um, up, and they were neutral colors. So what we did for their wedding was I just bought a bunch of the their purple and teal wedding color flowers and I just added those in there for pops of their colors amid, um, among the neutral ones. So the next day after the wedding, I went back up there and we took everything down. And so I still have all of the flowers that I pulled out of there and I um, plan on making them a floral arrangement. Um, I've got a, their wedding colors were teal, purple, and um, kind of black. It was dragon and, and butterfly theme. So the black goes really well. I uh, got a black milk can um, base and I'm going to make them a floral arrangement with one of their um, wedding pictures on the front of it. So that's what I'm doing tomorrow. Watch for that video probably next week. So here's the final reveal where um, you get to see uh, all of the little projects there. And some of the ones in the background are the ones that I did for the patriotic um, collab on Friday. And here's each side. I'm showing each side of the um, of those the cutting board in the round with the pig and the the 
cow and then the two different trucks. See the rolling pins there. And I thought I got a closer up picture of those little fireworks things uh, from the salt and pepper lids, but I guess not. And then here I'm just kind of going in and Oh, there we go. I got at least got it some with the video. Aren't those cute? So let me know which one, uh, which one of these projects was your favorite. Leave it in the comment below. Um, I really had fun with this. I don't, I'm always running way behind when seasons and holidays and all that come up. So all of these collabs that I'm in are keeping me on track. Because normally I would have gotten inspired to do all this stuff like a week before the 4th of July and it would have been too late. So doing all these videos and these collabs are keeping me where I need to be <laughs> on track with the with stuff. So thanks for watching.